I've been looking forward to driving the newest Audi RS5 ever since it debuted at last year's Geneva Motor Show. You can imagine then that I was pretty jealous when my colleague Seth got to drive it last summer, and I didn't. Fortunately, the 2018 RS5 has now reached America, so I flew to Phoenix to find out firsthand just what makes it so special. I think the first thing to try out is acceleration. The new RS5 is more powerful than before and 132 pounds lighter, so acceleration is pretty impressive. It's 0.8 seconds quicker to 60 than its predecessor. That's 3.7 seconds, and the top speed is up to 174 miles an hour. Now, power comes from a bi-turbocharged 2.9 liter V6. You get 443 pound-feet of torque, and that's available from just 1,900 RPM all the way up past 5,000 RPM. So really, anytime you get into it, there's just this massive wave of passing power. That's certainly an advantage to going with a bi-turbocharged engine. So on roads like this, passing is never an issue. Even going uphill, there's always this huge, huge wave of torque. Now, power goes through an eight-speed automatic transmission. It's really, really incredible how smooth it is, even in dynamic mode. I can see that as a little bit of a downside. Maybe you want a little more excitement when you activate the shift paddles, but I do like just how prompt it responds to them. As you would expect from a fast Audi, all-wheel drive is standard. This one also comes standard with an active rear differential. What that means is it can actively shuffle the torque from side to side between the rear wheels through turns. And couple that with the fact that there's a big rear bias to the all wheel drive system and it doesn't feel nose heavy like some people like to say all wheel drive cars always do. This one sends 60% of the torque to the rear wheels by default and if you're really getting crazy with it, it can send up to 85% of the torque to the rear. Now every RS5 sits about a quarter of an inch lower on its sport suspension than a regular A5 or S5 but you can opt for an adaptive suspension with three different damping curves. That's the one we've got on this car and in comfort mode it is incredibly compliant. We'll talk more about that in a second. Really kind of floats over the road despite having big 20 inch wheels with low profile tires. But when I go to dynamic, body roll and pitch and dive are pretty much exercised. I really like the way that this car is just incredibly planted and stable going through bends, whether at low speeds or high speeds. It doesn't feel like a big heavy car. It kind of wraps around you in turns. The inside is a lovely place to spend time because, well, every A5 and S5 is a nice place to spend time. Dress up bits in this, well, we've got a different carbon fiber weave. We've got these nice bolstered seats that, yes, even have a massage feature, which is lovely. And this perforated leather on the sporty steering wheel. I like the interior. I like the functionality of the virtual cockpit and the easy to use infotainment system. Do I wish the paddle shifters were a little bigger and didn't feel so plasticky? Sure. But overall, this is a really nice place to spend time that I think does telegraph that this RS5 is some Thing a little bit special. The outside looks striking too, especially in this fantastic Sonoma green paint. The fenders are widened by 0.6 inch on either side to help fit those forged 20 inch wheels. The new front fascia has plenty of vents to funnel air to the oil cooler and intercooler. While out back, you'll spot a new diffuser, trunk spoiler, and those enormous RS signature oval exhaust tips. This thing looks mean, like it's ready to hit the racetrack. But let's be honest, even though we all like to imagine that we spend all our time on racetracks or beautiful winding roads or the autobahn, a lot of times you just have to commute in everyday traffic. And that is a big part of the RS5's appeal. When I move it back to comfort mode, the ride quality softens up nicely, the steering is lighter and easier to use, the gearbox shifts very, very gently and smoothly. Well, it would be hyperbolic to say it's no less comfortable or pleasant than an A5 or S5, but it's really impressive how little this car beats you up on highway drives. And adding to that everyday livability, the new RS5 is even more fuel efficient than its predecessor, three miles per gallon better combined. The RS5 starts just above $70,000, so competitors in this set with similar performance, you might be looking at the BMW M4, the Mercedes AMG C63 and C63S, maybe a Cadillac ATS-V. Now the C63 and the M4 might be a little livelier, but they might beat you up a little bit more on everyday driving. Disappointments with the RS5? Well, really not that much to talk about at all, but there are two areas where I'd say that the emotional emotional aspect of this car isn't maybe quite what I expected. The gear shifts, because they're so incredibly and perceptibly smooth, well, it's perhaps not as exciting when you run through the gears as in some competing cars. And the exhaust note, although it gets louder when you put it in dynamic mode, the little butterfly flaps open up in the back, it's really not as crackly and fireworks-like as some of its competitors which again, maybe makes it a little bit more livable on a day-to-day -day basis, I don't know. What's most telling of all though, is that once the camera was turned off, I just wanted to keep driving the RS5 as long as I could until Audi told me I had to give it back. 
It's just a superb sports coupe, whether you're driving normally or in full-on dynamic mode.